50 years ago today, the buildings here at Headington were officially opened. It marked an important moment for what was then the Oxford Schools of Technology, Arts and Commerce, later the Polytechnic and then Oxford Brookes University, as it finally moved into its new home after years of being spread around the city. The accommodation for the Schools of Technology, Art and Commerce had been unsuitable for a long period of time. Um, their main buildings in Church Street, St. St. Ebbs, were cramped and they had a number of locations within the city itself, I think it's around 19 extra locations, um, such as rooms above a garage, um, some church halls, um, an old girls' grammar school, um, plenty of locations, um, but they were spread out and I think they really wanted one campus where they could focus their studies. It hadn't been an easy ride. Although by 1950 the land had been purchased, money allocated by the Ministry of Education and approval from the local education committee granted. When the plans came before the City Council's planning department, permission was denied. Subsequently there was a public um, outcry against this decision and the outcry was spread throughout the entire town, um, both the citizens and local um, companies and importantly key figures in the council and the university, including Councillor Casey Weir, um, were in support of the plans and actually arranged a meeting um, to voice their opinions. The press cuttings document nicely the progress that was made in actually trying to get permission um, for, the, for the site and includes the City Technical College proposal being turned down by the planning committee. There's a notice here showing a meeting being called in order to protest against that decision. And many letters of complaint were written, including a nice piece written in the Oxford Times, which states, It seems almost incredible that such a thing could happen in Oxford, which should be in the forefront in educational matters. Even more astonishing is it that it was rejected without any valid argument being advanced against it, except that it would make a slight increase in the rate, an increase which the majority of ratepayers would not have grudged in view of the great return it offered the city's educational service to local industry and the national economy. Permission was finally granted in 1952, and Viscount Nuffield, a former student at the school, tapped in the foundation stone in April 1954. Here we have a book that was commissioned for the opening ceremony. And this one in particular was donated by the son and daughter of John Henry Brooks. And it covers information from the, the early years of the institution to the harvest, the later years. Um, John Henry Brooks referred to um, the Headington site as the promised land. This is really the culmination of many years hard work to bring the institution into one location. Oxford Brooks is still changing today. Building moves forward on the John Henry Brooks Building, which will change the face of the Gypsy Lane campus once more when it opens, bringing many teaching, studying, library, social and support services under its roof. It marks another step in our journey here at Headington, or, as former Brooks principal and guiding spirit John Henry Brooks called it, the Promised Land. <laughs>